Howdy, Casey here. Welcome back to my channel and also my video series on my building a DIY expedition camper. Now we're on the video number 65 and we are going to be installing not just a hot water tank but a whole bunch of plumbing stuff and trying to cram it all into a very small space, get all the fittings done and test it all out to make sure it is absolutely leak free. Uh, uh, Colin, uh, <laughs> Casey are reaching out from the camper and I'm in the middle of doing something that's fun but also pretty challenging and that is actually trying to figure out how do I fit some of the bigger components in here the hot water heater the air conditioning condenser and the inverter so let me show you a little about what I got going on right now so right down here I currently have my hot water tank this is a six gallon hot water tank and the hot water tank that I chose to go with is a Scanvic six gallon 120 volt electric heated hot water tank with no internal heat exchanger because I don't want to actually take coolant from the engine because there's obviously a risk of coolant leaking or whatever and then causing the engine to fail whereas with an electric one all I have to do is take an electric wire so it's very reliable and dependable and I'm still taking the heat or power from the engine to power that electricity to heat the hot water while driving but I can also heat it just as efficiently if not even much more efficiently than propane or any other form of gas heating while also stationary and it's silent this way it's also very easy and cheap to replace the internal heat element if I ever need to and they're also readily available and also this is much lower cost than a DC powered one even though that would be slightly more efficient because I wouldn't be having those losses in the inverter but my inverter is going to be on all the time anyways so this was the most efficient lowest cost lowest weight most reliable way to go and so I'm very happy with this selection and then started the game of hot water tank Tetris so trying it all these different ways along with the cruise and comfort compressor so figure out which way would really work best within my my cabinets my my plumbing one line and even though this is a rough sketch my plumbing one line allows me to basically suck water from a outside source fill it in via gravity or pressure and be filtered in any three of those combinations and also be able to isolate any tank in any way and also be able to reverse pump it out and also allows for all the necessary drains and so forth from the tank and pressure onward pump. and i've got everything kind of laid out where my filters are going to be up against this wall and, and my pressure pump and all that stuff is going to be back here i'm just trying to play with the orientation of this hot water heater and if i fit it down here or up here and how it would turn it and also the comfort and cruise air conditioning compressor that would go here and then the refrigerant lines that will drop straight down to where the to the condenser and then up to the evaporator and so just thinking about that and how it's going to you know get connected in so just trying to get a little bit of support and stuff and figure out how I'm going to bolt it in and get it also a little bit isolated from a vibration and things like that and then over here is going to be where my inverter is going to go it's going to be up against this wall here but uh, I got to think a little bit about that and how that's going to get mounted in and right speaking of that here is my inverter this big beautiful victron inverter right here and we'll get to that victron inverter in the rest of the electrical system in a future video coming up soon right now it's about installing this plumbing system and there's a lot to do here so once i got my initial layout done and all my fittings and stuff organized that i'm going to start with i went ahead and got everything kind of played out as far as those fittings and what i am using here are nylon fittings because they don't transfer uh, thermally and they also are very durable they handle even freezing temperatures quite well and of course they're lightweight and they don't corrode so I like to use them I do have quite a few valves in here so I can isolate and separate things off as needed and I am using my liquid thread sealant that I've used in the past before my past videos as you may have seen because I like to use it it works really well it's clean and simple to use and I can of course uninstall and reinstall a fitting if needed to be I am having to use a heat gun here to actually get on this silicone braided tubing because it is so durable and you can see I'm really having to push really hard to get this tubing onto the barbed ends of these fittings. And so the little bit of heat applied to this tubing just helps soften it to get it over those barbs. It certainly would not even leak after without using hose clamps. Nonetheless, I did use stainless steel, wider banded and also rolled edge hose clamps to ensure that they would not cut into any of the tubing at all. And they would hold very tightly onto each of these fittings. Uh, but they really are not even needed with this type of tubing over this braided fitting. It was quite difficult to install. One little tip to use other than a heat gun to help uh, soften the tubing up a little bit to apply this is actually to use some lip balm onto the barbs of these fittings as I found out. A little bit of lip balm really helps to lubricate these tubing and get it over the barb fittings and help that install much easier. And of course it's 
food safe because we use it on our own lips. And so putting it onto the barbs doesn't get it inside the tubing, just gets it over the barbs where it's gonna slip over much easier. So I go ahead and laid everything out here and just keep installing things as I go. And one of the benefits also of using this structural composite framing for the walls and the floor of the campers that I could actually draw on it with the dry erase marker and draw out where things are going to go which also helps as well as laying things out. Another little tip here as well is that I used half inch tubing as my interconnect because I had to to keep my interconnect small between my left and right or passenger side and driver side tanks and then three quarter inch tubing between the tanks and onto every the other part of my plumbing system. I would have preferred to use all three quarter inch to keep my fittings and my tubing consistent. And I probably could have been just fine and got by with half inch tubing as all my interconnects between my tanks and so forth is really the only thing that would need larger than that would be really the fill ports going into the tanks, which those are three quarter inch. And so one suggestion is try to keep everything more or less at the same diameter of tubing as possible. I did go ahead and also do my drain tubing at one inch, which I'll go into that later, and I think that's appropriate for the drain tubing. I've used three quarter inch tubing in the past for drains, and it's been perfectly fine. It's worked quite well, but one inch will even work a little bit better. So go on and installing all these different parts, getting everything nice and tightly tightened up, all these hose clamps torqued, and of course, all the different components in there, in the places. So it takes some time and effort to get all that done. And there's still a lot more to do in this plumbing system, but this gets a whole bunch of it laid out. And one of the things I'm trying to also think about is access to all the valves and the pumps and have everything be serviceable and replaceable. So if I ever need to in the future to do that, I certainly can. Another thing I'm also thinking about is my placement is the hose clamps themselves, making sure that I can get access to them to tighten them should I ever need to in the future again. So in addition to be able to replace the pump or any of the accessing the valves to be able to shut stuff off, also just even doing any kind of maintenance or replacements and later on should that ever be needed. So after doing some water tank Jenga and making sure that I got that in a place where that is going to work well. It's also doing this water pump Jenga and also with all the valves and the fittings, everything else. And I'm also and make sure that I'm trying to install the pump that's also in a way where I can use the same really structure that I'm installing the hot water tank with to hold not only the pump in place, but also think about where the filters are going to go and my accessibility to change out those filters in the future. And in this system that I've designed, I actually have five different filters, one for the pressure fill, one for the gravity fill, and then two actually for my removal of the water from the tanks to make sure it's clean coming out of the tanks and then also a separate UV filter for drinking water. So there's a lot of different pieces all going together here. And just in case you missed it from some of my earlier videos in this camper build video series, all of my structural framing here, my 8020 structural framing is actually one inch profile and it is actually glued down to the floor. It's set up in a way where it's only glued down really on two sides, two parallel paths going longitudinally along the camper. It is incredibly strong with this, over 500 pounds per square inch of tensile strength. And, and of course, there's a lot of square inches of this tubing or the framing that's on here. And so it is incredibly strong. So not only is it strong enough to hold all these water tanks in place, but of course, all the other components of the cabinetry and so forth. Now, one thing I have to do, of course, is unfortunately drill a hole in the floor, and I have to drill several holes in the floor. One for actually the drain from the water tank, should I ever want to drain them. And another is actually for my gray water drain, which I want to keep that separate until it gets below the camper, just in case there's ever an overflow of any kind. So I actually have to drill holes in the floor here, and I'll show you what I'm doing for my pass-through of my plumbing to make sure it is incredibly thermally uh, non-transfer resistant and also it's very strong and structural and also completely air and water tight water tight from and air tight from both below and above so I'll show that in my next video coming up and so that's one of the one of the holes I already drilled here and I'll have more of those coming up that I have to do but there's a whole lot of these little sub assemblies of the plumbing and the valves and everything else I got to go in here so it is pretty complex trying to get into a pretty small space and I'm keeping it all to a small space so that I, of course, maintain space for my cabinetry, for storage in the cabinetry, and of course other things in those cabinetry. 
but also I want to make sure that all of this plumbing is accessible. So that was really accessible through my little crawl space and also from within the cabinet itself by removing the lower drawers and or lower access panel uh, where the water filters will be behind. And then I can access all these valves and of course all the rest of the plumbing and the thermostatic valve from the hot water tank so that I can actually adjust the hot water temperature as it exits the hot water tank. So there's a lot of different pieces to this. I can also divert water from each tank side, each tank, one of the four tanks or either side. So I can use water from any one of the tanks or separate those tanks should I ever need to for any reason. And that way if I have any kind of contamination in one tank or any kind of growth in one tank or any kind of poor water, I can certainly go ahead and separate that out. Another thing I'm also doing here is I'm installing the pump and the hot water tank over some structural fiberglass pieces. And so it's one a bit, it's a little bit of a separation between that and the aluminum framing as a thermal separation, but it's also a vibration absorber for the pump and so forth. So that vibration from the pump, even though it's mounted on rubber feet, those are then mounted to this fiberglass structural framing, which is then mounted to the 8020 aluminum framing so this way any vibration from the pump is isolated from the cabinetry so I don't feel the cabinetry vibrating with the pump running and of course the hot water tank itself even though it's also in a fiberglass case it's very well insulated it is now also thermally isolated from the rest of the framing also now that it's all installed time to make sure it doesn't Quick leak. little water test <laughs> nice and now that the tanks and the water system has been installed, went ahead and filled them up with water and then tested it out, make sure there's no leakage, and then use the actual water pump to pump the water out since my drain wasn't installed, which will be coming up in my next video showing you how to put those drains in through the floors as well as finishing up the cabinetry and also, of course, finishing up the plumbing system here. So, so much more to come. Thank you for watching. Look forward to sharing more with you in my future videos and this build of my DIY Expedition Camper.